In this video, we're going to go over symbiotic relationships. Um, we just ended going over food webs, and you looked at some, you know, producer-consumer, predator-prey types of relationships. So in this one, we're going to go over different types of symbiotic relationships. Um, if you turn to your pre-post, you'll see uh, standard 6.1G. So I'm going to read that to you, and I'm going to highlight some things. I want you to highlight with me. Relationships between organisms may be negative, neutral, or positive. Some organisms may interact with one another in several ways. They may be in a producer-consumer relationship, predator-prey relationship, and both of these we've, we've already talked about in the last videos, or a parasite-host relationship. That's going to be one that we um, talk about in this video. Or one more organisms may cause disease in, scavenge, or decompose another. Again, those we talked about um, in the food web in the earlier videos. The three types of relationships that we're going to talk about are mutualism, parasitism, and commensalism. So let's first by talking about mutual. In your packet now, um, I want you to turn to where it says mutualism. And we're going to talk about a couple different examples. The one that I have written in your packet is between a clownfish and a sea anemone. This might be one that you are the most familiar with um, from you know the movie Finding Nemo or just you know maybe from learning this word before. But in mutual relationships are when it's a plus plus relationship. Both organisms benefit. Okay? An example is you know uh, a clownfish and the anemone or an ant and um, you know flowers. And so for the example of the clownfish, an anemone, um, they, they both benefit. In this relationship, the clownfish gets a sense of protection, whereas the um, anemone gets cleaned. And so here's how that works. You know, the clownfish has a certain mucus that's on its skin that most fish don't have. And so an enemy sting. They have stinging cells. Uh, if you touch them, they would try to sting you. And so that's how they eat. An enemy is believe it or not, eat fish. Well, why don't they eat the clownfish? The clownfish has a protective mucus layer where the anemone cannot sting it. Therefore, the clownfish benefits from being able to hide in the anemone because other fish that don't have that mucus layer will be stung by the enemy. Moving forward, the anemone benefits because the clownfish will actually clean the anemone eat parasites off of it, leftover food, and so it kind of is the housekeeper, if you will, of the anemone. Um, in the other picture here, we have an ant and a plant. Okay? And, and so in this particular, we talked about bees in earlier videos being um, pollinators. Uh, a lot of insects may be pollinators, ants included. And so ants are pollinators to this particular flower. The ants benefit because they get nectar. You know, plants have to kind of promote pollinators to want to come to them. Same with bees. They get nectar. They're going to get a sugar meal from landing on that flower. That's what attracts them to that flower. And in return, they get covered in pollen. They fly or crawl away if you're an ant, go to another plant and drop off the pollen. And that's how reproduction occurs. So they both benefit. Mutualistic is both benefit. The next one is commensalism. Now, it's not the next one in your notes, so just skip down. Commensalism, I call plus N which is one benefits and one is very neutral. Okay, and so the best example is of a whale and a barnacle. And I'll show you a little later what that means um, in class, give you an example. That's a dash, by the way, just like a, like a you know, hyphen. Um, in the example of a whale and a barnacle, this is a picture of like a humpback whale skin. Obviously, you can't see that it's a whole whale. And these little things here are the barnacles that live on them. Believe it or not, they have the same food source. They both eat plankton, and they both eat microscopic things in the ocean. Barnacles are what we call sessile, and they don't move. So I'm just going to circle. Here's like a group of barnacles, and they are, oops, sorry, sessile. There you go. It's S-E-S-S-I-L-E. -S 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 and they don't move. Um, therefore, they can't always move to new areas where there's food. So they found if they attach to things like a whale, um, the whale's constantly moving to find new algae, they get a new food source. So the barnacle is the one in this relationship 
that benefits. So you want to put a plus sign next to the barnacle, that is the one that benefits. And the whale is neutral, so the whale stays neutral. This particular attachment is not harmful to the whale. When it gets parasites, it's something different. So their attachment is not harmful, so it doesn't hurt the whale. It's not really competing for food with the whale because it's going to eat a very small fraction of what the whale needs to eat. And um, the whale, so the whale's not hurt and it's not harmed. So we just say that it's neutral. And that's what a commensual relationship is. The next one's parasitic. I love these relationships. Uh, in class, we're going to show a lot more examples. Watch a small video on it. The parasitic relationship is a plus minus. Okay, and there's two words that go with the parasitic relationship. There's the host and the parasite itself. The host is the negative. It is who is hurt. Okay, and the parasite is who attaches or hurts the host, so they benefit. And so there's a million examples of these. The one that you're looking at right now is a picture of a tapeworm. And so we'll go over this more in class. I have a tapeworm to show you. These are just some pictures we're gonna bring back up in class when we talk about a specific type. But you know, um, we can be host of, to tapeworms. It's not common, but it can happen. Uh, other animals can happen to be a host with a tapeworm. We're gonna go over the life cycle tapeworm in class, so I'm not gonna take time now in the video to do it. But we are the host, and they steal our food. So we are hurt by that, and they benefit from it because they get our food. And that's kind of the general of all parasites. They steal the food of their host, usually through their blood. Eating their blood like a mosquito wants your blood because it wants your food that's in your blood. So that's the three different types of parasitic relationships. In class, we're going to talk about them a little bit more and add some more detail and also watch some videos.